Hello everyone, I'm glad to have you back. In our last lesson, we saw how we could work with Lambda expressions in Python and we looked at some basic examples. In this lesson, what we're going to do is to look at how we can handle exceptions. Exceptions are just errors and how we can handle errors using Python. We were looking at numerous examples and see the different kinds of exceptions that can occur. So uh, let's go ahead and begin. So I'll just close my uh, Lambda function example and if you want to check out how you can work with a lambda function please click the link that's going to show up right now so uh, let's create a new file and hope that I click that properly and I'll just call that uh, 16 underscore Python exceptions dot py and I'll just return that we have our exceptions uh, lesson so basically, what are exceptions? Exceptions are errors. And let's just see an example real quick. Now, a kind of a common example of an exception is a syntax error. Basically, a syntax error is a typographical error where you type out, you know, a code that doesn't really correspond with the basic syntax. For instance, if I try to use, uh, let's say, print, and I pass in a very, I just say hi. So I'm just trying to print out hi. If I save this, we can actually see the squiggly line telling us that there's a problem right here. So let's go ahead and just run that and see the results we get. So here it says name error print is not defined. Did you mean print? So to solve this, we're going to use print with a lowercase p. And if I just do this and change this to p, this is going to solve that problem again. Visual Studio Code is showing us that that's the problem that uh, occurs. So another thing we we'll look at is when you try to access a variable that does not exist. For instance, if I just say print name, I'm trying to print out a variable called name that does not exist. If I run this, I'm going. It's going to tell me that the name name is not defined. So that's a name error. Basically, trying to print out what does not exist yet. So to solve this, we have to create a variable called name and I'll set that to uh, Ahmus and once we've done that we can actually run this program and we can see the results right here we're seeing Mahmus being printed out on the screen so another example of a syntax error let's say for instance you're trying to uh, use a for loop so let's just see how we do that so let's say we have a for loop let's say for i in a range of values so let's say I start at 2 and I'm stopping at 10 and I forgot to put this uh, column right here. If I do this, if I just go and say print I, this is going to run no problem. But if I forget to put a column here for this for loop, it's going to give me an error and it's going to tell me where that error is and tell me the line. It's very important you know where the error is coming from because you can look at that position and then figure out what the problem is. And it's actually telling me showing an arrow here is telling me syntax error it's expecting a column so if we quickly go over here and put our column we're actually good to go again if you forget to use a closing parentheses for example and i save this and forget and run it in my program it's still going to show me that syntax error and this time around it hasn't told me what i need to fix but it told me an invalid syntax and uh yeah that's just by the way so i'll go ahead and quickly fix that and close this parentheses. Now, another kind of error that is very difficult to uh, find out about is a logical error. For instance, if I wanted to get the range of numbers between two and a hundred, and I actually accidentally type 18 right here between 18 and a hundred. So I wanted to get the uh, values of numbers between 18 and hundred, but I actually wanted two on hundred. If I use 18 and run this, this program is going to work fine, right? It's going to list out those values and it's going to run fine without any problems as we have seen. So this is a logical error. Our program still ran properly. It ended successfully, but we have a problem with our logic. So uh, that's uh, how that happens. Another common error you can get when you're running Python programs is an indentation error. Python respects the four spaces of indentation. Basically, if you press tab 
once let's say for instance i tab out once python understands this indentation that's why python doesn't use commas python uses indentation so if you mess up your indentation for instance if i indent this print twice and i indent this for loop to the left like so if i run this program it's going to tell me it's seen an unexpected indent it means your indentation is wrong so to do that make sure you fix your indent and visual studio code will show you lines where your indent is spaced so this is a first indent second one and turned index indent based on these vertical lines so i'll just go ahead and click this take this to the left and bring this back and then when you're using a uh, loop after a colon, you indent one so that Python understands this print statement is in the body of this for loop. I'll just go ahead and make that slightly uh, bigger so we can see clearly uh, in case uh, anyone is having uh, difficulty trying to uh, see this information. So uh, now, how do we handle these errors and prevent these errors from occurring? Errors. Uh, part of you know programming the better you get the lesser errors you have but even professional programmers they still encounter errors sometimes when they write their programs so let's look at some manual ways you can handle these exceptions so the first one i'm just going to say a uh, manual method using uh, So basically, I'm going to be doing a uh, what we call a data integrity. Basically, what this means is I want to check the kind of data I'm entering into the program, and I want to make sure that data is the appropriate uh, data. I'm just commenting out this uh, section. So let's create a uh, function. So I'll say def uh, data checker. And if you liked a refresher on functions, please feel free to click the link and it will actually take you to a lesson where we can see our functions. So here, what I'm going to do is to uh, get an input from a user. So I'm just going to say num equals the input. Oops. And let's just say uh, enter a number now if this is coming up this intellisense is coming up you could just press escape and this will get out of your way so you can uh, kind of like do that so what i'm going to do is to check if the type of number we're entering is an integer so to do that i'm just going to use an if statement and i'll say uh so let's just get back here oh let's put that in the body of our code so let's say if our type and i'll pass in the num is equal to an integer basically i'm asking python to use an if statement to check if the input we're entering is an integer type we're just going to print out to the screen and i'm going to say uh, data type of let's say of the value and i'll pass in the num which is the variable we created is integer if you like to learn more about format specifiers using the f string you can check out the link and uh, describe right here and you can find out more information about that so i'll use an elif statement and to check if the type of num is not an integer it's not equal to int so if we have any other data type that is not an integer data type so i'm going to also print out some information to the console and i'll just use my format uh, specifier for s i'll use format d or let's say format s is not an integer like so and we'll actually pass in num right here so what we're saying is if the type is not an integer, it's something else, maybe it could be a float, it could be a string, whatever it is, as long as it's not an integer, we'll actually have this. So let's also check if the type is a floating point number. So I'll just do an elif, which stands for else if. So I'll also type, I'll say type num is equal to a float. So if this is a floating point number, We'll just say uh, print 
and to say you entered a float value like so just to give us that information so what we are also going to do again is to check if the user is entering a string type so let's see if type num is equal to a uh, str that's it's part of the uh, string class so let's say uh, print you entered ooh, <laughs> a string value now whenever you have a comment and you have a typographical error in a comment it's going to ignore it because a comment is not included in a compiler these are all comments so in case my syntax is wrong and i have issues in my syntax the compiler will not identify that as well so that's just as on the side note so now that we have this let's go ahead and just run our program and say data checker now the thing is if i run data checker data checker as part of the body of this program i'm going to get errors as well so i have to indent this out of the program and just run this it's asking me to enter a number i'll enter 12 and it says 12 is not an integer and it says again you entered a string value the reason why it's saying 12 is not an integer is because it's coming from my keyboard anything you're typing from your keyboard even if it's a uh, number it's going to be represented as a text this is coming directly from my keyboard input and it's seeing this as a text in order to solve this problem what i need to do is to make sure that i cast the input to a number before we enter that so that's how we can check our data and to do that i'm simply going to say int and then use our open and closing parentheses like so so basically what i'm doing right now is to force the program in to receive that as an input as a integer input so here i'll just say uh, 12 and it says data type of the value 12 is an integer so uh, what i can do is to run this again and let's try any letter let's do a kjl or whatever like that and we can actually see this uh, thing run right here now our program suddenly crashed so one way to prevent your program from crashing when you enter the wrong data type is to use the exception handling built into built into python so instead of your program to crash abruptly because you're using a wrong impute type you want to be able to catch that error when that error happens and let's see that in the next example so i'll just comment out this code section right here and i'm just create some space for us down here and let's see our next example so we're going to use the try catch error handling oops i'll just do a handling with d so to do that whenever you uh, will python will run what is called a try block basically that's what you're trying to do so for instance if i try to print out num which is a variable that does not exist well what i'm trying to do i'm trying to print out this value so i'll just go over here i'll say try and remember anytime you have a colon you'll try and indent your code here and what happens when we encounter an error well in the accept block we'll try and catch that exception so i'm simply going to print out an information and say uh, let's say define num before you can print it right so this is our try and this is our accept block let's just save that and run this again so it says be defining them before you can print it this prevents our program from just uh, crashing like that without us no actually uh, oops sorry so this will prevent our program from crashing again if we just run that it just tells us define num before you can print it so you've actually you know grabbed that error before that error is uh, thrown to us we can even add other exception types and nest these try exception types let's see again let's say we try to 
print out another variable that doesn't exist. Let's just say stuff. So we try to print out uh, stuff right here. And what we're going to do is to accept. That's the spelling of accept. And I'm going to accept a name error. Now this is a built in Python, you know, error. And we're actually going to use that to accept that uh, error. So I'm just going to print out and see can't find a variable named stuff. Have you defined it? And you could even add another exception and let's just say accept. And within this accept, let's just print out other error exists. In case we don't know what kind of error that is, let's just save that and let's run this program again. It's so here it says define none before you can print it and it says can't find a variable named stuff. Have you defined it? And let's uh, use double quotes here. So I can actually use the single quote here or else we'll have those uh, problems occurring. So what we can also do is to actually use a try and a accept block and then also use a finally block. Now we'll use another uh, example to see these uh, different types. So what I'm going to do is to quickly comment this out because I don't want this uh, running each time we run our example. So I'll just use a uh, multi-line comment and I'll copy everything here and cut and then get down here and I'll just paste this information here and run it so that when we run this, we won't actually uh, see anything on our screen so that we'll focus on our next uh, example right here. So what we're going to do right now is to get some value from the user and then accept a value error, various value errors, and also accept a uh, division by zero error. If you divide anything in Python, let's say we have uh, num equals two and say num two equals zero. And let's say divide, or let's say div equals num divided by num two. And we'll try to print out we try to print out uh, print out div. If we save and run, we shall get a error called the zero division error. So this is a zero division error. Basically, you can't divide by error. So let's create an example and see how we can uh, handle this kind of error. So I'll create a function. Let's see first error. So what I'm going to do is to now create my try block. So let's say uh, try. Now within my try block, let me get the input. So I'll just say num equals. I'll cast it to an integer. So I'm just going to say int input. And then we'll pass in the text we want. So let's say uh, enter the first number and a column and a little space. So now that we have our try block, it wants us to, you know, drop in our accept block, our accept block. So I'll accept a value error. And then the information I want in my value error, I'll just say print. Let's say you can only input numbers. And not text. All right, so just a little nice warning to the uh, user that they can only impute a number, uh, not text. So I can even add an else block just to tell the user the number they've entered. So I can just do an else and within the else, oops, within the else, I'm going to tell the user the value they entered. So I'll just print out and I'll use an F string and I say you entered num as the first number. So 
So that's what we're going to do here. So what we can do is to actually uh, repeat the same thing for the second number. So I'll just cheat. <laughs> I'll just copy this and get down here and paste that and I'll change everything. So here I'll call this num2. So I'll call this enter the second. Uh -huh. So this, this is going to be the same. You can only input numbers, not text. But here I'm going to tell the user you entered num2 as the second number. So num2 has been entered as the second number. So what we're also going to do is to divide the first number by the second number. So to do so, I'm just going to create another try block. So each time you try to do something, you should create your try block. And I'll just add a comment here and say, dividing the first number by the second number. So now that I have my try block, so I'm just going to say uh, create a variable called result. And it's going to be equal to my num divided by num2, like so. And I'm going to print out the results of this division. So I'll just say results. I'll just say results. And then here, I'll use the format specifier in the results. I'll do a format s. And right here, I'll just say format results like so so we can actually get the results of that output it's expecting an expect block so i'll do my expect except sorry uh, how hard can it be to spell except aha <laughs> uh -huh, there we go it wasn't so hard was it so i'll run the zero division error and i'll just print out on the screen and see a uh, division by zero is not allowed like so and then we can add a finally block that is going to run irrespective of our program having encountered an error or not and the reason why it's important to use a finally block is you can actually return the error if you've encountered that specific error and then whoever is checking that log can find out that error for instance if you're working on a web page and there is no response from the server you can add a finally block that tells you that uh, the reason why your program failed is because there's no response from that server and to use a finally block we'll just say finally and then you can print out the information. So let's just say a print code executed. Now note, you can drop in the exception as an alias. For instance, our uh, except zero division, we can use as zero div like so. So we can create this as a variable and then one when what we want to do is to pass this as a variable so i can just say uh zero div like so so what's going to happen is when i run this and there's a division by zero we can actually going to see this error zero division error is going to be returned as zero if and then on our output we're going to see zero division by zero not allowed zero division error we can even do the same with our value error we could do this as an alias so that we can include that information on the printout as well so let's save this and let's run this and i'll just make this go so this is not going to run because i created a function now i need to call that function and name of that function is first error so let's get down here and i'll say first error we're going to save that and let's run our program so it's asking me to enter the first number. I'll quickly just you know create our error. So I'll do 12, enter second number zero. And it says, uh, you entered zero, uh, division by zero is not allowed. Division by zero code executed, right? So division by zero is not allowed. Division by zero code executed. So we stopped, we only said division by zero code is not allowed. Then we had that division by zero code executed. And then in the finally block, the program still ran finally. Let's see what happens when we uh, 
impute a weird input. So let's say I put W W E here. It says we can only input numbers, not text. It's asking for the second number, and then we can actually see unbound local variable before assignment. We can also handle that exception as well. So let's see another uh, final example and see how we can uh, force the user to impute the right value. So the program is going to keep on asking you to put the right value such that uh, the program doesn't just crash. You know, it's going to run unless you enter the right value. So let's say, uh, let's create a Boolean and call that true. And I'm going to be using a while loop for this example. So I'm just going to say while done. Basically, this is going to be while true. So we are going to try doing something right now. So I'll say user input is going to be equal to our int. We're casting our input to an integer. We can also cast our input to a float or any other value we want. And let's say, uh, please enter your secret number like so. So now what I'm going to do is to just break out of this whenever your secret number is the uh, appropriate uh, value. So here, let's do our accept. And now what I'm going to do is to uh, return multiple. We want to check for multiple errors. So I'm going to drop a value error, a name error, and also a type error. You can you know return as much errors as you want to return. And then here, I'm just going to print out enter numbers only. And then in our finally, I'm just going to print out code executed like so. I'm just going to save this. And okay, we don't have this in a function. So once we run that, our program should be able to run it. And uh, let's say we enter WAR or whatever. Let's try these. It says you can only input numbers, not text. So I'll just do this again. Oops, so we are act still actually running this first one. So I'll comment this guy out to prevent our program from running. So if I save that and run this, so enter your secret number, I'll do this, enter your secret number. We're just going to keep doing this if I enter anything as not a number. And if I enter a, an integer, it tells me the code is executed. And what I can actually do is to actually uh, print out the uh, value. So I'm just going to say uh, print F and just say a uh, user entered user input like so okay let's see uh, all right so let's just leave this and just try it out and we can actually see it won't work until we impute the correct value. You can forcefully use a keyboard interrupt, which is control plus C to exit out of a program where if you find yourself stuck in a program that loops forever, you can just use control C to raise a keyboard interrupt uh, error. So you can also raise an exception. So let's say, for instance, we actually try to uh, print out sum, which is a variable that does not exist. We can just raise a value error. And then we can actually pass in the information for that 
value error but that's how you can uh, you can do that you could just raise this error like so so I'll just clear that and we'll be looking more example looking at more examples on errors and exceptions when we're working with file system basically how to read and write files using Python files it's very important to do that because when you're reading and writing files you might not uh, you need to check if the stream exists is the you know is their location is their memory and all that uh, information is the path alive the path you're trying to copy the file does it exist you know uh, what kind of file type is it you know all that information so uh, once again thank you very much for watching guys you can check out the full playlist of introduction to python programming over here and uh, once again thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next lesson